Hi everyone, my name's Elizabeth, I'm a marine biologist and this is a five minute marine biology lesson. So I'm out rock pooling today and I came across this magnificent wall. Now I know I am very short, I am only five foot, but still this is a very interesting wall because we can look at the amazingness of how the sea affects where species grow in just over five feet. So this is an intertidal zone. We can tell that because I am not yet underwater, but I will be in a couple of hours if I stayed here. And everything in the ocean and in the intertidal zone, water is key. It's key how long they're in water for, because it all affects how you need to adapt. Now I have a whole documentary on this, so go and check that out if you want some longer lessons. However, for today's quick example, I'm going to show you just on this simple wall how we can read the rocky shore and tell how long everything has been underwater. So this section here is right at the top of our wall and that means it's going to be out of the water for the longest. What we can see here is there's not a lot of colour and there's not a lot of seaweed. What we do have are barnacles which are well adapted to live out of water for a long time. And we have a couple of limpets which again are extremely well adapted to living and drying out because they just clamp down on the wall. Like you can't get these off. They're so tightly attached that they are keeping themselves attached to the rock so that no water escapes their body and um, they can survive. But as we start to move down and a bit further, we start to notice these patches. Now this is seaweed starting to grow. Seaweeds are, are very different. Each type of seaweed has different adaptations. So at the start, we get some species that are adapted to surviving out of water, like this teeny weeny little seaweed here. Um, but as we go further down, we start to introduce new species. Now, what really can't stand um, drying out is often a lot of species that are red seaweeds. And so you won't find so many red seaweeds. You'll find browns and potentially you will then start to find green seaweeds as well. As we move slightly down, we'll start to see more and more colour. This is more and more seaweeds being able to live in a zone where um, there's enough water for them to live. They're not having to adapt as much to living outside of water, and so more species can find a home. But as we get further down, more and more competition happens because more species are able to live there, and so more species are fighting for the real estate of the rock. We then start to hit things like mussels. Now mussels can close up, which means they can survive out of water for a long time, but they're not as well adapted as some of the other species, so they're not found at higher up. This is also a species of mussel called Modiolus. You won't find um, bigger mussels, sometimes you won't find them higher up on the shore because they need a lot more uh, time in water to survive. Now we start to work our way right down the wall and you may notice that a lot of this is the same it's not so different you've got a, you've got the top zone which is about that big and that's just a species really really adapted for the shore and then you've got this which is all really the same now you can call this midshore this is the midshore where species are in this water for a bit they're out of water for a bit there's adaptations needed but you still can't live here if you're not adapted very well to live out of water but you'll notice a really stark change all of a sudden here now this is what you can call low tide we start to get some of the red seaweeds that i was talking about this stuff here this pink stuff is crustose coralline algae this is an algae that grows along the surface and forms a calcium carbonate skeleton a bit like coral we also start to get some fabulous animals here this is a an anemone, loads of different more green seaweeds. This is a red seaweed called bunny ears. Um, and this is another red seaweed, green seaweeds, limpets. We've got lots of snails. This is a much more productive zone and lots more species live here because the water is literally here. It's only out of water for maybe an hour every day. And this here is kelp and this is always found at the lowest of the low shore. It marks the boundary really between an intertidal zone and a subtidal zone. So it's a zone that will always stay in the water. And you can tell that by the kelp beds that start to form at the bottom. But what's interesting about this zone will be that 
there's there will be a lot more species but it will be a lot more competition there isn't many gaps in the rock here where there are gaps it's because limpets have been feeding and there's a lot of stuff going on here within you know within the space of a few um we've got sponges crustose coral and algae this is condus crispus we've got a type of mussel we've got another species of algae we've got kelp we've got tube worms um we've got <laughs> sea lettuce we've got an anemone uh what else have we got we've got bryozoans growing on this piece here limpets this is a type of fucus seaweed which can live here this is another type of red seaweed another anemone in the water there there's a lot of life only really in the space of you know just this tiny area and that's because it's low tide and productive so if the bottom of the shore is so productive, then why do we even have things growing in the mid-shore and at the top of the shore? Well, that's because it's so competitive down there that some species have decided, you know what, it'd be easier for me to spend millions of years adapting to, or hundreds of thousands of years adapting, to uh, move myself up a little bit and uh, live out of the way of all of the hassle down here. What we didn't find in that tiny section is also in the water there are a lot more predators, lots of big fish and lots of scary crabs. So by living out of the water for half of your life basically, you're avoiding predators for half of your life, unless the birds get you. Now what's really cool about this wall showing it in the space of six foot is that usually you will see this same pattern but stretched out and across an entire shore. It could be, I don't know, 50, 60, 100 metres between each of the zones. It could stretch back depending on what shore you're at. But when it's we're looking at this like height vertically, it's really easy to see the clear and distinct differences. That has been probably slightly over a five minute marine biology lesson. Please like and subscribe. I'm a marine biologist sharing the weirdest and most wonderful sea creatures with you. But more importantly, I'm sharing the species that you can find in just a pair of wellies so that you can go out and experience the joys of nature yourself too. I post videos every single Wednesday so check back then and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone!